Rising interest rates, tighter lending requirements, potential recession. What will 2023 mean for you as a landlord, for you as an investor? Stay tuned. Hi, this is Chris German. Welcome back to the Apartment Dealer Show. Happy New Year. It is 2023. And as landlords, as investors, it is go time. So first, what is your plan to raise your rental rates this year? Uh, who and how much are those rental rates uh, on your calendar? And are you aware of what cities may have certain restrictions? Keep in mind, in California, we're all under AB 1482. But here recently, in the last few months, individual cities have dreamed up their own versions of rent control. Are you aware if your city you own in has some sort of limitation? You can't claim ignorance. That's not going to work and you can get yourself in some hot water. So if you're not sure, don't call me, but call the city that you own in, talk with housing and ask, do they have any restrictions that are outside of AB 1482? But nonetheless, what is your plan to raise rental rates? And why do I start with rental rates? Because we're landlords. We own investment real estate. Bottom line, it boils down to cash flow. When we ask landlords, what is it about multifamily properties uh, that has you interested, that this is where you've chosen to invest your time, money, energy, it's typically one of three reasons, cash flow, appreciation, or tax savings, but cash flow always ranks number one, and rightfully so, right? For, for the investment we have of our time, energy, not to mention uh, the risk involved of being a landlord, especially here in California with all the new legislation, there should be a reward for our efforts, hence cash flow, what's your plan, get it on your calendar, who and by how much, and then of course execute those increases. The LA County eviction moratorium will come to an end at the end of this month. February 1st, 2023, LA County, no more eviction moratorium. Now, there are some new restrictions that have but been put in place and I would have you reach out to uh, our friend of the Apartment Dealer Show, Mr. Mike Brennan, eviction attorney located in Temple City. And Mr. Brennan can walk you through what are uh, the new regulations that come in as the moratorium expires. But nonetheless, we're getting closer uh, than we have been in a long time to some more normalcy in terms of owning uh, multifamily properties. So that is a good thing. We've been waiting uh, several years now. On to the market. So here in a couple of weeks, we will be releasing our annual market update in terms of what took place over the course of 2022, uh, where did we see values, where are things trending, and where are the rental rates. Now, if you're on our email list, if you attend our live educational events, you already know what the rental rates are in your area because we shared all that information. We gave you the rental rate by bedroom count, three bedrooms, two bedrooms, one bedrooms. But nonetheless, in our next video, we're going to update that data as well as highlight, hey, what were the highest sales in particular corridors? What do we see as the average price per unit cap rate and so forth? That video is forthcoming. What I want to spend some time here today discussing is, in a more broader sense, is what are the major themes of the market as we begin this new year? Now, needless to say, anxiousness would be probably the top theme as we begin the year. Anxiousness fear. So where does this fear uh, stem from? Primarily, as we talk to investors, landlords, our clients who own multifamily properties, it's interest rates. Uh, given the fact that we were spoiled for quite some time, and that's what it was uh, at 3%, 3.5% interest rates. Now that we're at about five and a half percent, it's a much different, uh, much different dynamic. Keep in mind, we were spoiled. Those interest rates were artificial interest rates to help prop up the economy. And we all should have realized, maybe we didn't know when, but at some point it was going to come to an end and the end is now here. And so the interest rates that we're now dealing with are 
uh, probably something closer to reality with that increase in interest rates. Again, the overall uh, sentiment of the market would be uh, anxiousness. Now, that anxiousness in the market has essentially led to a drop off in sales the last three months. And that is due to the fact that investors are trying to wrap their head around to get comfortable with the new market as it is. Now, let's address interest rates. And at our last educational luncheon we held in October, I went through this in detail because we saw it coming and we knew what would be the repercussions of the rising interest rates. At the beginning of 2022, in general, the average interest rate for a commercial loan, we're talking about properties, five units or larger, right? Commercial financing was about four and a half percent. And in general, LA County, San Bernardino County, the average cap rate, about 4.2%. Now that's important because if we just look at the rise in interest rates and we say, okay, well, that's going to make or break the market. Well, what's happening with pricing? What's happening with cap rates? Because that's now fluctuating. So again, at the beginning of 2022, when everyone felt good, right? We were coming off the highs of all the cash and purchases and and so forth and new and the higher historic rental rates. Well, where were we at? A 4.5% interest rate, a 4.2% cap rate. So there was that differential of about three basis points, meaning on a commercial loan, you were actually losing slightly on every dollar borrowed. When we look at cash flow, okay, well, what does that mean? Let's take a look at the slides that we shared uh, at our educational event. Here, if you look at a million dollar purchase, and we're just gonna say, hey, let's say this was the beginning of 2022. If you would have put 40% down, which is $400,000, and the income on that property was $72,000, and the expenses were about 30, that'd give you, that would give you a net income, NOI, of 42,000, hence the 4.2 cap rate. Okay, this is our baseline, using an interest rate of 4.5%. So on that particular building, after you made the mortgage payments, paid the mortgage payments, your net cash flow was $5,519. And I put forth the argument that investors, as interest rates would rise, they would say, okay, I want, in, in just easy terms, I want the same return for my money. Well, if the interest rate is going up and thus the mortgage payments are going up, in order to get the same net cash flow, what has to happen? you have to bring the price down. So let's say you take the rate from four and a half to 5%. In order to make the same cash flow that we were previously making at four and a half percent, the building would have to now be purchased for $957,000. Well, what happened to our cap rate in that scenario? Our cap rate went from 4.2 to 4.44. Well, if the interest rate went to five and a half percent where we are today in order for the investor to earn the same rate of return that same building with the same tenants and same amenities and same rents would have to then sell for nine hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred right so we're talking about a what about eight little eight percent difference in price and the cap rate has now went from 4.2 where we started to 4.7 well, guess what now has happened in the market? As interest rates have climbed, it didn't happen right away, but we see it now. You see properties on the market sitting longer, more and more price reductions, and buildings being priced in the high 4% cap rates, some even at 5% cap rate or higher. So there has been this offset. What am I getting at? You could have bought a building when everyone felt good about buying a building, paid an interest rate of about 4.5%, purchased that building at a 4.2 cap rate. Or today, take on a new loan at 5.5% and here and within the coming days, purchase a building for a 5% cap rate, if not higher than a 5% cap rate. You can always refinance down the road as interest rates adjust. But 
I'm making the argument here that this is much to do about nothing. I realize nobody wants to pay more interest than they have to on a property. But in investment real estate, interest is uh, the portion of the mortgage that you're able to pay off. So it's a tax write-off. I'm having us focus on the fact that cap rates now are increasing, which means prices are adjusting. The anxiousness in the market the way I would put it is, it's much to do about nothing. And why else would I say that? Well, let's look at the fundamentals of multifamily properties. Let's take a look at vacancy rate. Vacancy rate is nearly at zero. How many vacancies do you have? Most people are running at nearly at zero. Or, you know, you might get one here or there, but it's not like vacancy has dramatically increased. Well, why is that? Bottom line, there's more renters than there are available units supply and demand, rental rates. Rental rates, remember if you watched our previous videos going into 2021 and 2022, we shared that that was the biggest gains that we had ever seen in rental rates historically for as long as they've been tracking this, two years back to back. So although I will admit that the rental rates as we see them today, they no longer are increasing, even if we stabilize where we are, the rental rates are so high from where they were in 2019, 2020, that so long as you stay on top of your rental increases going forward, you're going to do just fine cash flow wise. The affordability of homes, because that really is what will compete with us as landlords of apartment units. Individuals who may, and depending on where you own, this impacts you more than other places. Some locations, unfortunately, the tenants just will never be homeowners. Other locations, like say South Pasadena and Glendale and so forth, your tenants in general are trying to figure out a way to buy a home. But as of right now, homes are unaffordable. Why? Well, when you look at the interest rate to purchase a single family home, those have gone up significantly. And, how, and that market's being hit significantly. And how do we know that? Well, we look at this statistic here that if you look at the year-over-year -year sales from December of 2022 versus December of 2021, we saw the largest drop in sales that we had ever seen in the last four decades. Homes are unaffordable. Your tenants are not going anywhere. And for the time being, landlords definitely have the upper hand. Now, potential recession. I'm not an economist, but here's what I can tell you. The media has accurately predicted 10 of the last three recessions. Now, sit with that for a minute. But what I'm getting at is you can't listen to the talking heads. We're multifamily investors. We're multifamily owners. I have skin in the game. I put my money where my mouth is. I'm in the middle of my own rehab project as we speak with increased labor costs and increased cost of supplies. Bottom line is, if you look at what makes multifamily profitable? What makes multifamily stable? Vacancy, rental rates, we have, and, and tenants, customers, all those things are in our favor. Now, consider this. You and I, as owners of multifamily properties, we own the product that everyone wants to own. CoStar did a survey near the end of last year to ask investors, and this included uh, investors nationally, if given the choice, would you want to own medical, office, warehouse, multifamily? Multifamily ranked as number one. Why? Because it's tried and true. And whether you look over the course of the last 50, 20, last 10 years, what's been the predictable direction of multifamily values? They have gone and they're a great hedge against inflation. So what I'm getting at here is there's never a bad time to buy real estate, right? You need to have a plan and a strategy, but there's never a bad time because there's many investors that I have met with that have let two and three cycles go by and still will point out, well, after all, and then you fill in the blank of whatever the news is of the day. So at the end of the day, you have to decide, I have to decide, given the market as it is, what 
does that mean to us? What does that mean to you? And really that's predicated on, well, what's your goal? Uh, you do have a goal, right? At the onset of every year for myself, uh, and as we sit with clients and as we advise, we begin with the end in mind. What is it that we're looking to achieve by owning multifamily properties? At the end of the day, these properties, even as nice of properties that I think I own, and you've seen the videos, are bricks and sticks. They're a means to an end. And I realize some have sentimental value. And again, I'm not trying to uh, dismiss the time and energy that you have into your rentals. But I think the greater point here is that there's thousands of properties out there that can bring about uh, our financial goal. And the financial goal is predicated on building that financial legacy that I talk about again and again. And the financial legacy is really a piece of you building out that vision uh, that you have for your life. So as we look uh, to embark on 2023, and as we look specifically at our rentals, above and beyond just issuing rent notices to increase rent, the bigger question is how much and by when? If my financial goal is X, whether that's a date of retirement, that's a certain income level by a certain date, that's the bigger question. How much by when? How many units, if you building out your plan and with the knowledge at hand that you have, how many units will it take to achieve that financial goal? Because you believe that X amount of units will bring about an X rate of return, which brings about X amount of income. And even beyond that, if we're able to achieve that income, the question is, well, what does that really mean to you? What will that additional income mean to you? And as we chase after this goal, in order not to get caught up in the talking heads and the negative news and Newsom did this and another upcoming election, but to keep our head down and focus on the goal, what we need and what my mentors have taught me is you just need enough compelling reasons to succeed. If you have enough compelling reasons to succeed, then essentially come hell or high water, uh, you're going to make this happen, regardless of what the tenants rights groups do and whatever new legislation may come about. You figure, you figure a way to, to accomplish that goal. Now, as I'm building this out at the beginning of the year, and I just passed this along, uh, this is something I do personally, and then I actually walk my team at the apartment dealer uh, through what I refer to as the wheel of life. And this wheel of life has several spokes, and these spokes represent various areas of your life, from physical to financial, social, contribution, mental, spiritual, family, and friendship. And what you do is starting at the center, if the center is zero, and the outside of the spoke is 10, a scale of one to 10, you go around and plot where do you see your life in these various areas. And then once you plot it, you connect the dots and then you see where the wheel is out of balance. If we're talking just specifically here about financial, after all, you're watching the apartment dealer show, we figure out, okay, based upon where we currently are today versus our ideal, what's one or two things that we can change to make our situation more ideal? Now. Sometimes this begins with uh, dealing with the situation at hand, pillar one of the financial legacy. How do we increase the value of our current properties from within to increase our equity, to increase our monthly cash flow? We start there. Then next we move on to say, okay, then how do I grow and not just grow, but grow exponentially? If we literally just hang on to a property, now, especially given rent control, we know what our destiny is going to be two, three, four, five, ten 10 years down the road because they're only allowing a certain percentage increase every year. There's a way to grow exponentially. Typically, what investors do and our clients utilize is the 1031 exchange because you can leapfrog over if the state says it's 5% plus the change in CPI. For our clients, the average increase that they see through a 1031 exchange is anywhere between 15 to 20%, you know, very a conservative uh, uh, estimate there. Many have done quite more than that, but 15 to 20%. Well, we're talking about then 
leapfrogging, essentially doubling what the state will allow through a 1031 exchange, and then moving in to that new property, which year after year as you raise rents, it only compounds your return. Again, for our money, our time, our energy, the risk involved, we're talking about how do we extrapolate greater and greater rewards. We just celebrated my wife's uh, 40th birthday. And happy birthday one more time, beautiful. And at the end of the night, I remember thinking, well, that's it. It's all over. All that planning and everything that went into the event, it's gone. And my wife and I plan on living to uh, be 120 years old. So we're uh, one third of the way uh, through here. But uh, as I thought about, well, gosh, I mean, there's 40 years come and gone. Uh, best I get it, go get after whatever it is that uh, Chris wants and whatever it is that uh, Chris wants for his family. So I talked about compelling reasons to succeed. In order to achieve our financial goal, the more compelling reasons we have to succeed, the more likely we are to achieve that goal, the more likely we are not to be complacent, and the more likely we're not to uh, point fingers on, 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 on you know who's to blame, the more likely we are to say, okay, uh, here we go. I'm chasing, I'm chasing and building that financial legacy. So whether it's increasing our income today, pillar one, and we're going to link to a video here where I go much more in depth, or it's pillar two, exponential growth, doing something to dramatically increase your net income, number of units owned today, so that your future self will thank you for the moves that you made today. That's pillar two. And we'll link to a video that goes into much more uh, depth on that. Or you're planning for your heirs. So you're, you realize that your heirs are going to need more money in their lifetime than you've needed in yours to create the same standard of living. I mean, even if you just look at what inflation has done here recently. So you're planning for your heirs or you're planning for your exit. How do you mitigate the taxes? How do you exit this thing with the least amount of financial liability? We have a video for that as well. We'll link where I, I dive into that. So please review those videos. The, the, the video content uh, is to stimulate the conversation, to help you stimulate the conversation with your business partners. Oftentimes your business partner like myself is our mate, uh, but nonetheless to stimulate those conversations to help you begin to contemplate, okay, what is that necessary next move? If, if I'm honest, here's where I am, here's ideally where I'd like to be, or here's where I thought I'd be by now, um, or if I could have things my way, here's how I'd like it, okay, then what are uh, the things that we need to put in motion? If you own multifamily properties within the geographical area that my team and I service, please give us a call. Day in and day out, uh, we work alongside investors, landlords like you to help them walk through the three pillars to help decipher uh, what are the best options available to them. And of course, we own and manage our own multifamily properties. So we uh, eat our own cooking, as they say, and we have practical experience of pillar one, improving properties, moving on to pillar two, expanding 1031 exchanges, new purchases, and putting them back in pillar one to that increase the value. And of course, we've been involved in hundreds of multifamily transactions in terms of representing landlords, purchase and sell properties. Many of those are individuals who uh, their goal was to simply cash out and retire. And we've helped them put together strategies to help mitigate uh, the tax liability that they had. And we're happy to assist however we can, because the bottom line is nobody's coming to save us. We have, if the politicians prove that over the course of the last three years, would you correct? Nobody is coming to save the landlord. We have to do this for ourselves. We have to get more of the good stuff, uh, given the fact that we are uh, taking on the management responsibility of multifamily properties. And uh, I just, I will ask you to uh, stay with us here on the Apartment Dealer Show. Subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Share these videos with other landlords that you know. Uh, like I mentioned, just here in the coming weeks, we're going to go through our market roundup to let you know exactly where are multifamily values in the city that you own, where are the rental rates in the city that you own, so you know exactly where you stand there. And then, of course, we will continue to discuss the changes in the laws and in the financials of the market 
and everything else in between when it comes to multifamily ownership. Chris German from the apartment dealer, once again saying this is going to be a great year. Do not listen to the naysayers. And over the course of this year, let's focus on more cash flow, tenants who behave, and protecting ourselves from Uncle Sam. Till next time.